lecture. Thank you so much. That is for all the IGNU learners, but we also have, uh, you know, all our dignitaries and our coordinators, everyone who's joined out here. So uh, we will start the evening. Good afternoon, respected members of the IGNU fraternity, regional directors of all regional centers of India and abroad. Academicians, coordinators, counselors from IGNU study centers, invited guests who have gathered here from across 13 districts of West Bengal, friends, IGNU learners, IGNU alumni who have joined us here as an expression of their support and solidarity of IGNU's cause of service and its tremendous potential to revolutionize and democratize education in India. Ladies and gentlemen, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji participated in India's decade, Chips for Vikshit Bharat, and virtually laid the foundation stones of three semiconductor projects in India. It, according to a popular daily, it has been the vision of Prime Minister to position India as a global hub for semiconductor design, manufacturing, and technology development fostering the creation of employment opportunities for the nation's youth. In line with this vision, the foundation stone was laid for the semiconductor fabrication facility at the Dholera Special Investment Region, DSIR, in Gujarat, the outsourced semiconductor assembly and test, OSAT, facility in Assam's Morigao, and the outsourced semiconductor assembly and test, OSAT, facility at Sanan in Gujarat. These units will employ thousands and catalyze employment generation in related sectors like electronics, telecom, etc. Indira Gandhi National Open University, IGNU has arranged the special telecast, the broadcast, webcast of laying the foundation stone of these three semiconductors facilities. And the event was telecast, broadcast, webcast through Gyandarshan TV channel. Gyan Vani FM radio station, YouTube, Facebook Live, Facebook, and Swam Prabha channels of IGNU. This is Dr. Sujata Datta Hazarika, Senior Regional Director, IGNU Kolkata Regional Center. And it is my proud privilege to coordinate this special lecture on behalf of IGNU from Kolkata. The lecture, Utilities of Semiconductor, Communicating Science for Common Man, is organized with the objective to convert the premises of specialized formal parlance, language, and rationality of scientific discipline into popular science for the understanding of masses so it can find a place in the language of common man. IGNU, being the people's university, has revolutionized education to reach the doorstep of every citizen in India beyond borders of age, gender, religion, community, and we hope this, through this effort, we will be able to make communication of science more effective for common citizens of India. We have here with us Dr. Ankush Bagh, Assistant Professor at IIT Guwahati. He completed his PhD from IIT Kharagpur in 2016 on, again, I, I will be taking out these uh, very specialized jargons, and it says he has specialized in G, A, and Gyan devices, including epitaxial growth, fabrication, and characterization of G, A, N, A, T, M, T, S. Presently, his research interests are ultra-wide band gap, band gap uh, semiconductors, such as G, A, 203, for both high power and optoelectronics applications. So you can understand we are so dependent on uh, Dr. Bag now to come down to our common people's parlance and explain what semiconductors are in reality for science and how semiconductors are helpful in a common man's life. Thank you so much, Dr. Bag. I will now leave the uh, uh, request you to take on your lecture. Thank you very much. And as I repeat, I may just repeat for all our learners, Please do not put on your mic and stay muted and allow Dr. Bhag to complete his lecture. You can write your comments in the comment. And there will be no other 
let me just make an announcement here for all those who are here. We are conducting an IGNU uh, grievance portal. It is this is going to be a, this is going to be held at the end of this month, and uh, there will be emails sent to you. So if you have any any uh, any question regarding any other issue besides this lecture, please attend the students grievance uh, camp that is going to be organized we will send you it will be on uh, on 28th of march so just keep an eye for that and do not write any other uh, comments regarding that thank you so much thank you dr bag please take on your okay so before we start let me share this presentation i Just to save some bandwidth, uh, I'm stopping my video if it is okay. Yes. Uh, is this uh, uh, my slides are visible to all of you? It, yes, 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 sir. Okay. Okay. So. Um, uh, good evening, uh, all of you, and uh, I uh, convey my sincere thanks uh, to Dr. Shujata Hajarika for giving me this opportunity uh, to discuss this utility of semiconductors uh, on this auspicious day uh, in our um, semiconductor history in country. So uh, here, uh, again, uh, Dr. Shujata already introduced my background. So we basically work on semiconductor devices. And in semiconductor, also there are different type of semiconductor. Uh, so this is called typically wide band gap semiconductor. So what is that wide band gap and what is band gap? What is wide? What is semiconductor? Uh, that is something I'll try to explain uh, as uh, simple as possible. Again, uh, I think it will be very difficult. Again, uh, please pardon if I uh, make any mistake. So then uh, quickly, uh, this will be the uh, outline of uh, today's uh, this uh, talk. So initially, we'll uh, see what is semiconductor, uh, followed by, of course, why this semiconductor is important. Uh, and then what the, was there in the history and where we are moving forward in future. Uh, using this semiconductor and of course uh, this what is uh, this economics part and where we are currently standing in India and uh, again uh, uh, at IIT Guwahati what are the uh, activities we are doing uh, in semiconductors and finally uh, this uh, the, the work we are doing doing in our so wise lab is actually uh, the name of our lab so this is white band gap semiconductor electronics lab and finally, we'll uh, conclude. So, so what is semiconductor devices? So, as you know, these devices which uh, meets uh, some uh, requirements, some application. So, there are different type of devices, uh, as we can see. So, around uh, us. So, it may be again uh, mostly these are electronic devices. It may be in the form of mechanical device in other uh, biological device uh, or chemical device. So, uh, but here in the semiconductor, it is mainly the electronic device. Now, um, what is semiconductor? Semiconductor, this conductor terms comes uh, from the conductivity of electron. Electron, again, uh, uh, if we uh, go back to our high school uh, physics or science, we know that uh, our all this matter or atoms so inside this uh, we have a very tiny particle uh, named uh, as electron so that's very light tiny particle so uh, how this particle is moving um, within a certain material uh, uh, that is the conductivity or the electrical conductivity uh, 
and now in this type of uh, material which is uh, semiconductor here the conductivity of electron is in between your conductor and the insulator so insulator is very um, highly resistive or the conductivity is very less in very simple term electron uh, face lot of difficulty when uh, traveling through the insulator insulator means again wood uh, anything uh, paper so they are insulator again there are some materials also here you can see so glass they are also insulator so electron struggles to move around within this material on the contrary on the opposite side we have the conductor conductor again we know in uh, around us there are different electrical wires so they are uh, essentially made of, uh, different metals so in conductors these electrons can flow very smoothly but the, uh, we are interested in semiconductor which has a conductivity in between this uh, insulator and conductor so why uh, we need semiconductor uh, because so to develop or to uh, uh, realize any uh, devices we need to control the conductivity so this control uh, word is very important because again you can see although in, in uh, metal or conductor electron go very smoothly but we cannot control uh, so now why the control is important because if we cannot control something uh, we cannot make uh, some useful purpose using that device or using that equipment or instrument gadgets whatever you say so that is very important uh, so uh, that is why semiconductor is important here we can control the conductivity so now what is behind this so basically the from very uh, base, uh, uh, concept is the uh, the conductivity or the current depends on how many electrons are there so this is again uh, typically called as concentration of electron and uh, how easily they move uh, within this uh, material so uh, again that uh, technical term is the mobility so both this concentration and the mobility of electron will decide the total current that will flow again we know that in uh, electronic device we have two main parameter one is the voltage and another is the current so voltage is the reason uh, behind this movement of the electron and how much current will get eventually that will be decided by how many uh, electrons there are and how easily they will move so that is why this con concentration and mobility actually this concentration and the mobility both are embedded inside this conductivity parameter so this is all about this semiconductor device now coming to the properties of this semiconductor so it has as we uh, discussed that it has a conductivity between your insulator conductor and then uh, its conductivity increases with uh, increase in the temperature this is contradict uh, contradicting uh, contrary to your metal behavior because in metal if we uh, increase the temperature the conductivity decreases so but in semiconductor it is the opposite now again uh, in a typical semiconductor uh, it, uh, the conductivity increases when uh, light is incidenting on this and uh, also the conductivity we can tune by controlling the impurity content impurity content basically the technical term is the doping so doping means uh, uh, all these semiconductors they are solid state in nature so you know that uh, the matter is divided in uh, or categorized in three parts uh, one is a solid state, one is a liquid state, another one is the gaseous state. So uh, essentially all the semiconductors is solid state. Again, uh, uh, as you can see your computer, laptop, mobile, they are all solid uh, state in nature. So then uh, in this solid uh, matter, uh, uh, the atoms are or, uh, ordered in a periodical manner. So all the atoms inside this solid matter if we dig into so we'll see some atoms and they are all uh, arranged perfectly so that is called crystal lattice and inside this crystal lattice we can incorporate some foreign atom so when uh, some foreign atom will incorporate uh, in a certain uh, arrangement of uh, different atom so the conductivity will differ will change that is something called the doping process and by doping we can once again tune this uh, conductivity that is something uh, required when we want to control the conductivity so now uh, uh, again it can also emit light uh, of some specific wavelength 
i guess now you, uh, you can uh, you know there are many leds light emitting diodes so they are again some uh, electronic device or some semiconductor device uh, so which can emit the light so these are the some examples of uh, material these are all sim uh, symbol so silicon germanium seller uh, sellerium telluride silicon germanium gallium arsenide so these are the different class of materials now uh, and uh, this all the semiconductor semiconductor is a broadly um, uh, broad term so there are many types of semiconductor and they can be categorized in many ways so uh, some of the ways are you can see this is the elemental and compound what is elemental so from here you can see the silicon germanium selenium uh, tellurium uh, they are all elemental semiconductor why because if we uh, see uh, this silicon or germanium lattice will only get the silicon atom or the germanium atom so there is no other uh, second atom but in compound semiconductor such as gallium arsenide silicon germanium so these semiconductors are made of two types of atom or sometime again three types of atom or the four types of atom that is why the name is compound and this is elemental now again uh, depending on this element and their position in the periodic table they are also categorized such as uh, group 4 element group 3 5 element group 2 6 in in this way so again uh, whether they are organic material or inorganic material again inorganic organic you know so organic means there is a, a carbon hydrogen uh, this uh, covalent bonds so uh, using that organic materials we can uh, use uh, as semiconductor or use uh, as a device and uh, mostly uh, in industry or in normal sense we use uh, inorganic uh, uh, semiconductors and also we can uh, very recently there are a lot of research going on this hybrid type where we can find both organic and inorganic semiconductor or the materials so again depending on the structure of the semiconductor of the material there are different category like crystalline so all the atoms are perfectly ordered polycrystalline that means some of the atoms are perfectly ordered but some of the atoms are not and microcrystalline or nanocrystalline amorphous they are the ordering is uh, very less so they are uh, like in amorphous they are all the atoms are very randomly uh, placed so that is why they are amorphous in behavior so now again uh, depending on the impurity or the foreign atom incorporation or again uh, i should also mention if there is any defect defect is another uh, again very uh, important and broad term in semiconductor uh, electronics so if in your semiconductor you have some foreign atom as well as defect so then that semiconductor is called as extrinsic semiconductor and if there is no uh, uh, doping or foreign atom or defect that type of semiconductor is called intrinsic semiconductor again another type of way to categorize this semiconductor are the 3d 2d 0d so this is the dimension in normal all the devices they are 3d 3d means there are uh, three axes x axis y axis uh, z axis then again there are uh, some semiconductors such as graphene where the electrons or the current can move only in x axis and y axis that means the con uh, electrons movement is confined to only two dimensional uh, two dimension so uh, again uh, we have some semiconductor with the one dimension it is like a wire or like hair so through that single uh, axis your electron will move and uh, fourth is the zero dimension zero dimension is a so uh, there is no dimension what is this zero dimension again uh, uh, using this uh, zero dimensional semiconductor we can uh, make very good light emitter and uh, there are already uh, some uh, tv uh, commercialized based on this technology you may have heard of qled qled this uh, stands for quantum dot led so uh, that is made of and inside the, this type of uh, tv you may find this type of semiconductor that means zero d semiconductor now again uh, in semiconductor discussion uh, there is another uh, important technical term which is called band gap so what is this band gap so as you can see the uh, band gap of semiconductor is uh, there is a conduction band and there is a also valence band again uh, these bands are formed in uh, semiconductor because of the uh, interaction of different uh, atoms and again there is uh, uh, something called Pauli's exclusion principle 
to obey that Pauli's exclusion principle um, when we'll consider uh, a set of atoms, so they will form band from the energy levels. So now in a semiconductor, the difference between this uh, conduction band and the valence band is uh, uh, something around one electron volt, one to five electron volt. So uh, that means um, uh, to make uh, some electron conducting uh, in this semiconductor, you need to take one electron from the valence band to conduction band. So that means essentially you need to supply some energy. So it may be optical energy, it may be electrical energy, it may also be thermal energy. So uh, when electron is in the valence band, it cannot move towards the current. Uh, so now, when you will provide that energy, that band gap uh, 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 value of energy, so then you will take one electron from the valence band to conduction band, and now they are, uh, these electrons are free and it will contribute towards current. So this is the concept of the this uh, energy band diagram. So now, co considering these uh, three broad categories of uh, material uh, con uh, for your electrical conductivity, so the, in conductor, all both these bands are overlapped. So that means uh, every time you'll find some electrons inside metal. So that is why this uh, uh, metal or your wear uh, in your uh, room, so it can conduct uh, electricity very smoothly. But uh, again, insulator, that means glass or uh, in other wood. So the in uh, this, uh, anyway, I should not mention wood, wood is a different uh, class of material. So especially the glass. So in uh, insulator, uh, so the in, uh, energy, band gap is very high that means it you need to provide very high amount of energy to take one electron or bounded electron uh, sitting in the valence band to your conduction band where they can contribute to your current so that is why they are insulator so this is the concept of this conductor semiconductor insulator uh, considering the band gap again uh, there is a saying uh, that in semiconductor discussion uh, if you go, cannot uh, discuss the problem considering the band gap that means you don't know the uh, what you are talking so anyway this is this was uh, uh, by some uh, nobel laureate this word so now coming to this uh, uh, this is uh, okay, this slide this is a part of a ic integrated circuit so integrate inside this integrated circuit again uh, this is a part of uh, uh, mosfet you know in mosfet th this is a three terminal uh, device where we have one drain terminal one source terminal so electron flows from the source to drain in this way and another third terminal that is called gate through this gate we actually control the flow of electron through this channel so how many electrons will go and whether the electron will go or not that we can control by applying bias or the voltage at the gate terminal so again this all this uh, this type of so this is a very small part of ic so this you can see any IC like in your processor in your other ICs. So now to make a semiconductor device or overall circuit or IC, do we only need the semiconductor? So the answer is no. So now let us see what are the materials we need to realize a complete application in semiconductor world. So here we have this metal. So metal again uh, from here the metal uh, uh, the electron will flow and it will go through the source and then will uh, uh, reach the drain. So here we have the metal and metal has very less resistivity. So this uh, ohm centimeter is the unit of resistivity. So typically the metal we use in IC, it is aluminum or copper. Now okay, again, we have this semiconductor. So this is main uh, active material or the heart of this device or semiconductor device or MOSFET is made of the semiconductor which has again a conductivity in between metal and the insulator. Now again we have this insulator just below this gate there is insulator so which has a resistivity of 10 to the power 16 ohm centimeter so this is very high resistive material. Now another uh, thing um, we uh, need to package it, package means we need to encapsulate this entire uh, part of uh, this IC inside some plastic. So normally you can say, uh, you, uh, you, if, you, if you have seen some uh, black color uh, encapsulation, so that is made of some PVC. So that resistivity, uh, resistivity is even higher. So it is of the order of 10 to the power 18. So now if you see, 
in considering the resistivity there is 10 to the power 24 order of change so this is order of change not just simple uh, twice thrice so 10 to the power 24 so there is a different type of material across the different uh, resistivities we need to realize a complete semiconductor device or ic so now uh, these are some uh, semiconductor devices as you you have you might have seen. so this diode zener diode so these are all the three terminal diodes so this is the light emitting diode short key diode and here these are all the three terminal diode so uh, uh, scr the silicon control rectifier metal oxide uh, field effect transistors junction field effect transistor bipolar junction transistor so essentially uh, in this all devices uh, why i put this cartoon so we need to flow the control of electron so uh, that is why semiconductor is important uh, and where we can control the conductivity so this is the uh, bottom line now coming to the application you know so in every uh, walks of life in every uh, where if you see uh, in modern uh, uh, this uh, society you will see this uh, semiconductor application so starting from the communication then our home appliance then most importantly this is the electric vehicle electric vehicle uh, is coming uh, in a um, rapid way in our country also so where uh, uh, this semiconductor devices will have significant role again uh, since uh, this is again uh, something very important uh, considering our country so this electric vehicle why we need because uh, uh, of the efficiency so uh, presently uh, we have uh, that uh, uh, car which is run by uh, petrol or diesel so but uh, the actual energy uh, in uh, of this petrol and diesel that means fuel energy uh, we are wasting lot of fuel energy but if we move to this electric car this uh, efficiency will be very high efficiency means how much energy we are giving as input and how much energy we are getting as at the output again another interesting thing in electric vehicle is when we'll break or when we'll try to stop our electric vehicle so then not only will consume the like uh, initially will consume the power energy so that means your uh, energy will go from the battery to your car to uh, run the wheel but when we'll st stop or um, when we'll uh, keep our uh, leg on the brake so that time our car will start producing this energy so overall uh, uh, there is a lot of benefit uh, considering the efficiency uh, or energy efficiency in uh, in our electric vehicle and in uh, to uh, operate this all uh, electric vehicle we need a lot of semiconducting devices because semiconductor devices are very efficient in nature so again uh, we have a lot of application of semiconductor devices in uh, biological application in uh, so then as well as this is the supercomputer here we have at IIT Guwahati. So they are also for, for we have a significant uh, role of semiconductor devices. Now, uh, to realize uh, uh, any application, any electronic application, so these are the broad four categories. What, what are they? Uh, essentially, let's say if we consider, uh, I think all of you, uh, some of you are sitting uh, uh, in front of your mobile or uh, computer laptop. So this, all this computer laptop mobile overall, we can call this as a system. Now inside system, if we dig into, or if we open this system, uh, open we, our computer or laptop, we'll see some circuits are present here. And now inside the circuits, if we further dig into, you will see some devices. So some devices, it is, uh, it may be active device. It may be passive device. Active device means all transistors diodes uh, uh, and uh, passive device means your uh, registers so then all these devices are again made of the material certain materials some uh, now, as we discussed so it this materials uh, primarily will be the semiconducting material along with the other insulator metal or this pvc like uh, encapsulating materials so these uh, uh, four categories everywhere we'll see if we uh, uh take any typical electronic application and now from here you can understand we need to take an interdisciplinary approach 
to meet this uh, semiconductor device application or requirement. So this is very important. We cannot work uh, uh, just alone and realize uh, this kind of application or uh, we cannot uh, develop this technology uh, just with uh, one type of expertise. We need to work collaboratively. So now uh, to explain this uh, uh, previous slide uh, in a, uh, in a differently. So if we just take an example, like uh, this is a, a normal iPhone. So inside the, this is an iPhone again, this is a system. So inside this iPhone or this, uh, this phone or any mobile phones, modern day phone, you will find this type of uh, circuits. So different uh, uh, type of subsystems are there. So power management IC, uh, tra RF trans uh, trans receiver, touch screen controller. And so inside uh, the, uh, this all subsystem, so this is basically a system. So inside this system, there are different subsystems. And inside this different subsystem, we'll have this kind of circuits. So in circuits, there are different type of devices, active device and the passive device. And eventually all these devices are made, made of certain materials. So th this is the whole story, uh, how we are uh, realizing a typical electronic system. Now, uh, once again, uh, if we take an, uh, if we take another example, this is again uh, uh, just a few I think months before. This was a very widely used uh, electronic gadget, uh, which is a pulse oximeter. So, in pulse oximeter, also we have all these systems, then uh, circuits, then again they are made of some devices, and finally these materials. So, uh, this flow will always be there uh, in all these electronic applications. So, <coughs> sorry. so here also you can see, so all these applications, so IoT, data science, energy system. So in terms of application, there may be many, but this is like an inverted pyramid. So at the very bottom, if you go, there are the semiconductor uh, conductor technologies, device scientists, material scientists, they are working. So, when, uh, so this, is, uh, the, uh, this is very important message. And there are, of course, a lot of manpower or this expertise requires at the interface or at the application level. But all these uh, uh, semiconductors uh, driven uh, materials are coming from these uh, people. So this is the uh, 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 overall uh, uh, this industry flow. Now coming to the history. So where we started or where this uh, say, uh, yeah, uh, semiconductor started. So it started in the year long back, you can see 1782. So the semiconducting term uh, was coined by this uh, Alex, uh, Alessandro Volta. So then again, uh, slowly this uh, in uh, next century 1833. So Michael Faraday uh, observed the semiconducting effect. As we mentioned here, the, in case of this silver sulfide, uh, he noticed this conductivity is in increasing with the temperature. This is against or uh, this is the contrary to the metal behavior with the temperature. So then uh, again, uh, there were a lot of contribution by different scientists over the years. So all this, uh, uh, I'll just uh, in the interest of time, I'm skipping this. If you are interested, uh, please let me know. I will be very happy to share all this. So then uh, there was this uh, uh, solar cell uh, uh, in 1883. Solar cell is again another important semiconductor device, which is very uh, essential for sustainable future. And then there was uh, this discovery of electron by JJ Thomson. And this uh, particular tiny, uh, this particle is behind all this uh, drama or this play. So then uh, how these electrons is moving inside this material, uh, all these things were uh, slowly developed by different scientists. Now, this is again very uh, uh, widely uh, uh, shared or uh, picture. So that uh, again, yes, uh, it is called as most uh, uh, intelligent picture because uh, this is one of the Solvay conference. So there is a, uh, this uh, conference at Solvay in uh, 1927. So um, out of this uh, 29 attendees, uh, uh, 17 were the Nobel Prize winner or become uh, Nobel Prize winner after that conference. So why uh, we are, I am showing this uh, picture here because all these uh, uh, scientists, they contributed a lot towards uh, this uh, semiconductor 
development in the history. So uh, now go the concept of this semiconductor device. So all were the semiconductor and device, the two part. Now the device part all started with the in, uh, invention of this Lillian field. So he conceptualized this field effect transistor. Then uh, again, uh, there were uh, contribution by this uh, Rudloff who uh, conceptualized this forbidden band gap, then band theory came. Uh, then uh, there were contribution by the uh, short, uh, short key and the mod who uh, proposed this potential barrier model. And uh, then this PN junction was invented. Then the, uh, this particular invention was very important because this was the invention of transistor. So this uh, three scientists, Bardin, Shockley, and Bratin, they invented the transistor and they were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1951. So after that, uh, this was the transistor for which they were awarded uh, this Nobel Prize. And after that, uh, again, a different contribution came from Leo Asaki. He, de he developed this tunnel diode. Tunnel diode is used in high uh, in communication. Now you can see uh, before the semiconductor, this was the uh, computer. So first uh, generation, uh, this electronic computer made of uh, 18,000 vacuum tubes. Again, uh, as I mentioned, so essentially it is the flow or control of uh, electron flowing between two terminal behind all these transistor source drain electron is flowing third terminal gate we are trying to control so before the semiconductor thing came that means the solid state device came there were these vacuum tubes vacuum tubes means there was a grid uh, between anode and the cathode through the grid we used to control the flow of electron but the problem was you can see how big is this uh, uh, computer so it can uh, it could only uh, compute 5000 additions per second and these days uh, it's uh, uh, I, uh, I just forgot like many the complexity increases by many many fold so uh, the size again if you see uh, 50 by 30 square foot area so the, if you if there was uh, no invention of semiconductor device or revolution in semiconductor device Perhaps uh, like uh, we don't know like uh, how was our uh, today, so it was it is again difficult to imagine with the uh, without the contribution of the semiconductor revolution. So now this is again uh, that uh, same uh, this uh, uh, early generation computer. Now again uh, following that semiconductor device history. So then this is the uh, integrated circuit invention, Jack Kilby and then this uh, Robert Noyes, so they invented the integrated circuit. So uh, uh, semiconductor device, when they are integrated, they form a typically integrated circuit. So in very uh, common sense. So again, these two scientists, they also got Nobel Prize for the invention of integrated circuits. So then there was invention of metal oxide uh, semiconductor, then the CMOS. So at present, uh, in all this computing device, that means your mobile and this your uh, computer, so the devices are called the CMOS. CMOS C stands for complementing metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So uh, there are uh, N type semiconductor or N MOSFET and P MOSFET. So uh, uh, to realize an inverter. So using uh, that basic inverter, we can realize the complete uh, computer. So, and it was invented in the year, you can see 1963. Now, after that, there was invention of LED. LED, again, it was uh, unlike the previous device, it uh, MOSFET, which is typically used for computation purpose. But this LED is used for uh, 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 producing light. So then uh, uh, the first LED was made by this uh, Nick Holnack, although there was, uh, again, a uh, slight uh, this, uh, Con uh, controversy in history that uh, concept uh, people say it was invented in the 1927 by this uh, 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 Lose. So he uh, again, uh, this was the story of LED. So now, where uh, is our country? So because in this history, where uh, what we have uh, discussed just now, so mostly, I think not mostly, I think entirely uh, the foreign foreigners contributed, foreign scientists, scientists uh, researchers, they contributed. 
have we made uh, any contribution towards this revolution in here uh, semiconductor is history the answer is yes so the first uh, this uh, contribution again uh, i think most of you are uh, sitting closer to that place uh, so said jesse bose or said jagadish chandra bose so he uh, you know communicated uh, between two uh, two rooms in uh, presidency college that time now university so that time he used a small uh, device which was termed as a coherer so which is essentially was a semiconductor diode so that means in 1904, we already, uh, like uh, Professor uh, Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose, he already proposed this device. So we made our contribution, uh, although there, you know, there, uh, this Marconi, uh, this, uh, he got this Nobel Prize uh, uh, for this invention of uh, wireless transmission, uh, but actual contribution was uh, by uh, Sir Jesse Bose. Now there is no contribution; it is all proved. So you can read this article where it is explained in detail. So now, following that, uh, where we are moving forwards. So again, there is this something called Moore's law. So this Moore's law says um, uh, that every 18 months or two year, the number of transistor in, in a same area chip will be doubled. That means that size of this transistor will be half after every two years. This is not any law, any so-called law like Newton's law, but this was the prediction. And this Moore was the Gordon Moore. Uh, last year, probably he passed away. So he just predicted this in the 1965. But the uh, thing is, still this uh, prediction uh, is correct. So in industry, still people are trying to follow this uh, uh, exponential growth uh, in number of transistor uh, in a certain area. So again, for that, uh, now you can see this is the story from starting from the 1965 around. Um, and and uh, this is little uh, uh, old data. So still uh, the how the number of transistors per die is increased by following this Moore's law. and. Uh, this is where we are moving towards. So this is again uh, the how many components are there uh, per chip. So you can see this is a log scale. So uh, per 10 years, there is almost a decade change in number of uh, components per chip. And when we are increasing the number of components, that means the size of the device is reducing. You can see here. So this is 22 nanometer, 14 nanometer, 10 nanometer. Again, in uh, uh, today also, uh, I guess uh, uh, all of you must have uh, attended this uh, uh, speech by our uh, prime minister. So when you are mentioning fab, that fabrication lab, there you need to mention which node. So and what will be the size of the wafer? So uh, so that depend uh, that decide the technology that uh, are going to develop in that particular fab industry. So that is why this node, this uh, value, uh, this is important. So nanometer, again, uh, this is a very uh, my electronic, um, electron microscope uh, picture. So this is 22 nanometer. Nanometer, how small is the nanometer? Uh, again, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this two atom distance is 0.5 nanometer. So now you can see when our transistor size is 10 nanometer, that means how many atoms we can fit. 0.5 nanometer is the uh, distance between two atoms. So essentially, uh, uh, just uh, straightforward, if we calculate uh, uh, 20 atoms. So 20 atoms far, uh, we have the source drain, and then we are uh, trying to realize this uh, transistor. Again, uh, just for simple, uh, I'm trying to uh, this uh, simplify all this uh, uh, nanometer and this tall dimension. But uh, these days, the silicon technology is uh, becoming become very compl complex. So in this straightforward, it is not happening because of this complexity. You can understand we are going close to a single atom. So this is how our structure of the device is changing. So this was the planar structure. What is this planar structure? So only the control that uh, between your source and the drain was on one side of the plane. Now you can see this is called the fin fit. It was invented, uh, I think, uh, uh, almost uh, 10 to 15 years back. So uh, here the control is three dimensional. So this is uh, uh, again, uh, uh, get all around fit. Here also uh, we can get the three dimensional control. 
why uh, this is uh, three uh, this is the two dimensional control this these are the three dimensional control why we are following this because you can understand when the distance between source and drain is reducing so it will be difficult to control the flow of electron the flow of electron between uh, let's say 100 uh, let's say between 10 atoms if we have five atoms two atoms or three atoms it will be difficult to control the flow of electron that is why to improve the controllability over the flow of electron we are moving towards this kind of architecture so now what is the economics behind this you can see so this is the uh, global uh, uh, data so uh, it is also a little bit uh, old data this is up to 2020 so you can see how this uh, semiconductor uh, sales in terms of uh, billion dollar it is increasing over the years so where the steel industry or automobile industry you can see it is mostly saturated but the semiconductor industry in uh, uh, drawn in blue color it is still growing so uh, that is why we need uh, this semiconductor uh, and because our requirement is increasing now uh, coming to this nature of this industry so or this manufacturer there are typically two types of manufacturer so one is called integrated device manufacturer and another one is called the foundry so in uh, so integrated manufacturer uh, they uh, fabricate the devices starting from the design for particular application but in foundry different companies can approach and get their uh, device fabricated so the, the, their uh, this uh, business is a little bit different in so now the another uh, global uh, perspective in semiconductor you can see uh, that uh, from 2021 how rapidly it is going to increase to 2020 2030 so this is in terms of again uh, dollar so in billion dollar so and this is the different uh, application area so uh, or word communication or uh, then word communication is required for the data center and other things because you know we are uh, have a lot of social social networking sites and so many dependence on youtubes and other things so we need this wired communication along with the wireless communication also so there is also wireless communication so then automotive electronics that means the for electric cars industrial electronics uh, then consumer electronics as well as the computing and the data storage so this is the percentage wise growth contribution you can see still the contribution will be majorly from the computing and data storage uh, as well as the wireless communicating device that means the laptop or uh, computer data center and our mobile device they are going to contribute overall the 50 percent growth uh, in future uh, in our semiconductor electronics so now where we are standing uh, so currently again uh, most of the semiconductors we uh, import from outside uh, country so again uh, you can see there is a uh, huge and anyway this data is a little bit old data so uh, this uh, this was approximately 24 billion dollar import uh, on uh, just we are spending this uh, huge money to buy this semiconductor from the uh, neighboring countries now that is why this METI, uh, this ministry of electronics and information technology uh, they estimated uh, this is going to again get four times by 2026 so that is why then uh, our government initiated all this semiconductor uh, program and uh, uh, this mission which is called as indian semiconductor mission so then there was an outlay of uh, 76000 crore and as a uh, outcome of this proposal or this outlay uh, today uh, our government um, uh, laid the foundation stone for these three uh, facilities, semiconductor facilities. One thing we should also keep in mind, this fab uh, setup is not very easy task because this is very fund intensive or capital intensive uh, industry. So you can see to set up a uh, fund anyway, uh, I mentioned all these things in dollars. So, but still, uh, this is $3 billion to $6 billion. So uh, we need to invest. Uh, in a typical fab so this is huge uh, uh, capital in intensive uh, industry now uh, then uh, again uh, there was this uh, proposal that uh, 20 semiconductor manufacturing units are coming in the next six years uh, and there will be huge job opportunity as well so now coming uh, to this uh, uh, this present setup or initiated uh, 
uh, facilities in India. So before this uh, the Indian Semiconductor Mission initiation, there was only this particular lab, uh, Semiconductor Laboratory or SCL. It was it is in Chandigarh. So they uh, they were like still they are developing. So they are develop they develop this our uh, devices, semiconductor devices. But that is not commercial lab. They will not make devices for our commercial this use. They uh, they mainly develop the devices for space application and the defense application. Now mm, uh, with under the semiconductor mission uh, last year, Micron Micron is a company uh, who developed this memory. Memory means our hard disks, other. Uh, pen drives and other uh, memory related devices so they inv in invested this around uh, three billion dollar uh, in gujarat and today mm, uh, as you know this tata electronics they uh, 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 are going to set up uh, this semiconductor fab so this is a first commercial fab in india and with a estimated investment of 91,000 crore and at the same time they are also going to uh, set up an osac so I would request uh, again uh, students uh, who are participating. So this uh, acronym will surface uh, in uh, website, in news. So we should also understand what uh, does this uh, acronym mean. So this OSAT is Outsource Semiconductor Assembly and Test. What is outsource means this company, they can take the business or the components from other comp uh, other companies and they can assemble and test together so it is not about only you know, this tata will uh, uh, develop their own product so they will also give this service to other uh, uh, companies which is also very much required in our uh, country uh, so then it is coming under this atmp atmp is again the uh, acronym so of uh, assembly test marking and packaging so again, another proposal was by the CG Power and Industrial Solution. They are also going to set up this OSAT facility in uh, Sanand, so, which is also under this ATMP uh, scheme, which has around 7,500 crore proposal. Now coming to this IIT Guwahati, what we are doing, we have a very good clean room facility. And what is clean room facility? So clean room is a, uh, just if I say it is cleaner or uh, at least uh, 100 to 1000 times cleaner than a normal operation theater. So we need this clean room environment to fabricate device because you can understand we do not want to um, uh, put any defect or any uh, problem uh, in the motion of our electron. And now electron is very tiny particle. So any small, very uh, tiny defect or particle or contamination can significantly impact our overall device performance. That is why this clean room uh, is very important. So and uh, 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 fortunately, we have this facility in our campus. Now here, uh, typically as of now, we are developing, we have also very good equipment facility. So with which we are trying to develop this sensor detectors uh, medical diagnosis device, memory device, as well as power devices. And now coming to this, uh, our group here, we are working on wide band gap semiconductor. This is another compound semiconductor. Uh, so which we use typically to develop power el electronic application as well as the optoelectronic application. Because as you know, in power electronics, this electric vehicle uh, uh, is very important. So these devices are going to uh, 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 improve the overall performance or the efficiency of this uh, electric car as well as this optoelectronic application there is this healthcare and communication related wide application now this is the how we are approaching or making our this uh, all uh, power or optoelectronic devices both experimental and simulation we uh, try to do and finally in conclusion uh, as we can understand that semiconductors are going to be the primary driving fuel for this industry 4.0 or the fourth industry revolution. And the, uh, with this announced facility today, so of course our this entire uh, Indian uh, semiconductor eco ecosystem will get strengthened. And uh, certainly uh, our uh, uh, there will be thousands of job opportunity uh, in uh, our country, which is also very, very important. Now, another thing, as uh, you can understand, in this domain, we need to work 
together and collaborate to develop this semiconductor ecosystem single handedly this is not possible because we need uh, expertise almost all across uh, the uh, domain so physics chemistry mathematics electrical engineering mechanical engineering from every part we need uh, expertise and support to grow and develop this uh, ecosystem so finally uh, i would like to again acknowledge all the funding support uh, we received to conduct this research uh, and study and with this i would like to thank you all of you and if you have any question i would like to take thank you thank you dr bag for that uh, very comprehensive and exhaustive lecture i i'm uh, you know i would like to express my gratitude on behalf of ignu that you have taken out your time and you have shared so much of information and knowledge with all our, all our students all our learners from ignu this has been a proud uh, a privilege for the, all of them well i can you please um, i will be sharing uh, your emails in our uh, group so in case there are questions if you can kindly um, write write to them and uh, this is of course on my personal behalf i uh, what i really feel is that i hope this is going to be the beginning of another step ahead where we will be able to uh, you know having been in iits uh, and taught in iits i always and always feel that so many of our uh, extraordinary students are always in a hurry to leave the country and they find no opportunities and i hope this is going to create more opportunities for our students because by the end of the last sem there is only a uh, you know there's only a rush for records so they can apply for an ms outside and then after that the troubling part is they will not even stick on for a phd they will go for a finance uh, you know and an mba which i which never made sense to me when i was uh, there so that is what and this is happening in such a positive note thank you so much and uh, i hope we will be able to you know yes, when you madam, are here i have us. one question madam, yes rc rc shilong yes okay, joining well, us i want to one thing uh, that technology right. can uh, you please uh, can you please introduce uh, yourself can you yes, please introduce uh, yourself actually, uh, okay my name is uh, dr rahul bachaji i am actually yes, i yes. also have uh, yes of course our um, regional director from rc shilong yes i have also Uh, two years ex research in iit guwahati i was working in semiconductor uh, thin film at uh, that time we have some physical vapor deposition um, but uh, uh, it is difficult to control the mechanism due to uh, 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 using physical vapor deposition to correct control now i saw you have magnetic sputtering how it is different it means how can you control it uh, contamination how the level of becomes levels you achieved for getting more control of the systems so uh, first of all these two technique rf sputtering and chemical vapor deposition they are completely different rf sputtering is physical deposition so your uh, material will go atom by atom will get deposited and in chemical vapor deposition there is a chemistry like you will uh, uh, supply typically two materials uh, they will have uh, some chemical reaction then one part will get deposited on your this uh, wafer called or substrate and the other part will uh, come out uh, so this uh, completely different process now if we if you ask me uh, to develop a good quality uh, thin film which uh, uh, method is better so then i would say uh, cvd why uh, cvd because uh, from uh, this uh, thermodynamics point of view this in chemical process there is a chemical reaction so uh, then the material quality and the crystal quality overall the theme quality means how uh, properly the all at atoms are arranged so that arrangement uh, uh, quality we can ensure uh, easily if we follow this cvd uh, rather than this uh, uh, pvd kind of approach uh, so rf sputtering again uh, it's a different kind of pvd because there are other pvd Uh, i was also very fortunate to use mb mb again very sophisticated so technique so that application is different so 
but uh, if you straightforward uh, ask me to get a good quality thin film which uh, technique would be preferred so i would go with the cvd technique and uh, sir uh, what about polymer means uh, polymer is nowadays is not getting important polymer semiconductor polymer uh, again although i did not work uh, on polymer but what i feel uh, the main challenge will be this uh, uh, your reliability so because uh, part in considering device not only device any any electronic system or any uh, system there are two things one is the performance another one is the reliability performance means today if we check the uh, characteristics uh, how what are the outputs we are getting now reliability means today we are getting this performance after 10 days after one year after five year whether i will continue to get the same performance or not that is reliability and now when we'll uh, try to commercialize something then the reliability is very important because we are not going to just uh, buy today and we'll throw going to throw it tomorrow so the from industry point of view from customer point of view reliability is very important uh, perhaps for us like for researcher it may not be so important because uh, you know uh, typical academician uh, uh, yes. we don't uh, do that reliability but still we are also doing some research in reliability so considering this reliability i think polymer based devices uh, will have some problem uh, again polymer organic compounds so that stability or reliability will be a problem thank you sir thank you thank you yeah thank you thank you madam thank, thank you so much thank you so much uh, so uh, i think if uh, we will end this program and once again my heartiest uh, gratitude to dr bag for spending your time here with us and uh, in case of any questions we will be communicating it to you thank you so much thank you thank you so much with your permission just leaving that